again. <coughs> All right, so um, so we can have a, a special uh, series of uh, uh, lectures. So given by uh, Professor Jin Chao Xu from uh, Penn State University. Uh, so he's uh, visiting Stanford for uh, two weeks. Uh, and so he's uh, been uh, kind enough to uh, agree to give some, uh, some lectures. So we, we turned this into a, a one unit course, uh, CME 355A. So one unit course, so it's, it's only uh, five lectures, okay? Uh, for about uh, uh, an hour, 20 minutes each or something. Uh, so Monday, Wednesday, uh, Friday, and it will uh, stop, so it's actually five lectures, so it stops Wednesday uh, next week. Okay, so uh, uh, so Professor Shu, Shu is going to talk about uh, uh, additive methods for linear and nonlinear pumps. Uh, so it's a, a great honor to have him uh, give these, these lectures. So he's uh, certainly one of the pioneers and did some seminal work in this in this area. So uh, he's worked on many uh, very famous uh, preconditioners. So for example, for uh, in domain decomposition uh, methods, uh, there is the uh, Randall Pashek Zubi, so the BP expert conditioner that's been uh, widely applied. Uh, so Professor Shu has worked on multi grid methods, algebraic multi grid methods. Uh, he's also worked on uh, uh, preconditioners for Maxwell's equations that have uh, had a lot of impact with the Ibmeier. Uh, so, anyway, so it's definitely a great honor to have him uh, come today at Stanford and, and give these uh, lectures on, on these. Uh, Areas. All right. Thank you. So, yeah, just one more word. That, so he will also give a seminar uh, Wednesday next week for the Applied Math Seminar. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Dog, um, for the uh, invitation to be here to give uh, this uh, short course. It's really my honor to be here. It's, uh, um, there's uh, like a five lectures, uh, like a two hours each, like a ten hours. So uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to start uh, today with some preliminary material, and uh, we'll then proceed to how how uh, you guys respond. Uh, maybe Eric, you have some suggestions down the road. What should I have? Let me. <laughs> Uh, give an introduction, but the way I give an introduction of iteration method, uh, hopefully it will be different from you seeing from a textbook. <laughs> so, and uh, hopefully give you a, a new way of looking at things. And uh, hmm. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so anyway, I um. I will give some, maybe I'll give a quick introduction uh, to multi grid domain decomposition method as uh, applications. I was planning to spend more time on algebraic multi grid method. And uh, uh, there are just so many materials, and, but I do hope to, to give you the general ideas of, of, of this method. And uh, what I'm actually very interested in these days is uh, if we can apply all this technique to a deep neural network. And uh, Stanford, of course, is a leading institution doing this kind of business. I'm interested in the training algorithm for the deep neural network. And uh, I do, uh, oh, we'll talk about deep neural do deeply believe <laughs> that uh, some of the mathematical ideas uh, in this uh, lecture series should be able to, to uh, be applied to uh, this long linear optimization problems in this uh, machine learning technique. And but this is just uh, some uh, thoughts because uh, we're research oriented people, so <laughs> we just don't have some idea. Uh, all right. I'm going to start from the beginning. This is going to be some homework, okay? <laughs> I'm going to ask you to do a, a three by three matrix, four by four matrix, 
But you, you got to do it, okay? If you, I, I, I strongly advise you to do some homework. If you are a Stanford student, you should be able to deal with a three by three matrix. Okay, but, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to do, okay, we're just trying to solve equations. Very simple, all right? Now, uh, solve AX equal to B. Of course, the issue here is the cost. And the, uh, you know, most of the simulation takes a majority of the, the computing time. And uh, so uh, still, by far, the most commonly used method is still probably Gauss elimination method. <laughs> so you do elimination, you all studied this before, right? You do the backward substitution. The, the, the deal here is that uh, it's expensive and uh, uh, it takes all n cube of time, but if you use sparsity, maybe you can do better. And uh, so this, so I, I, you know, I want to show you how this uh, state of all of this business. I think the, the fastest computer in the world is uh, some way in China. And uh, it has how many cores? Uh, 10 million cores. And uh, uh, it's a petaflop computer. So you do this to a Gauss elimination, general dense matrix. If you do a 1 million unknowns, what, what do you think? How much time it takes to get there? Fastest computer in the world. <laughs> you do a million by million matrix. Huh? Huh? Anybody make a wild guess? All right, I'll tell you, it's about uh, three or four seconds. Now, the, if you study the uh, linear algebra, so you see how this is scale. If you 10 times more, that's like a thousand times more. You know, 10 times 10. No one now. The next one is going to be 40 days. <laughs> and uh, you can see that one, but you won't be able to see this number. <laughs> so the, uh, if you do a, a billion, which is not a big problem, if you do Gauss elimination, we are not going to be able to see the result of this lifetime. But uh, so, as you can see, if you use uh, just uh, you know, you know math method, classical method, you're not going to do very well, even with the fastest computer in the world. Now we'll do better. So the way we do right here is the this iterative method. There are basically two types of methods, Jacobi and Gauss side. Eh? Wow, when you do this uh, deep learning, for example, this is a gradient descent method. And uh, that's a Jacobi or Gauss side method, from, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, but uh, but uh, Jacobi and Gauss side method are the very basic. We don't underestimate these simple algorithms. So <laughs> it is the simplest method you can think of. <laughs> So what is the algorithm? So you, from n minus one, so every time you just uh, solve one variable at a time, okay? Jacobi says that I'm gonna solve it independently. Okay, all the, you just solve this uh, x1, x2, x3, all the off diagonal use previous times that. This is just Jacobi method. Uh, gauss Seidel says that, okay, I can do better. So if, when I, first I solve x1m, right? The second time, I'm going to, because x1m is known, so you put that one in there, right? So you update, you do this. This is called side of method. Uh, usually this type of method in computer science is called a greedy algorithm. Greedy means that uh, you only care for yourself. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you only solve one variable at a time. If you think about optimization problem, you say one them is the local optimization. Greedy means local optimization. Uh, so put this in a more general mathematical context. You think about a u equal to f. The reason I use u sometimes, you know, maybe in differential equation, like uh, Professor Dahl and I do, usually use u, usually use u <laughs> for the variable. And uh, so, you, so the idea is, that, so you, you think about mathematically, what do you see? An iterative method. You, you want to do u zero, u one to k minus one to u k. And uh, so you form the residual. <coughs> That's the only thing you can compute with because you do not know the exact solution. If the residual is uh, small, this is also tricky. Say residual is small, doesn't mean that the error is small. But uh, uh, let's say the residual is small, then you then say you are done with 10 to the minus 10 or something. Maybe you are happy. But 
Otherwise, you 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 so you form the residual equation a u equal a u equal to r. So if the a u equal to r is equal to f minus a of u o, this k minus one. As you can see, u is actually equal to u k minus one plus e. So if you solve this one exactly, you get the exact solution. But of course, you you cannot solve this one exactly. Otherwise, you can solve the original problem exactly. You solve this approximately. Approximately is the some kind of approximate inverse here, okay? And then uh, then you update. So this is pretty much the iterative method. The linear iterative method we're going to usually in this form, okay? This is the residual. You do the correction. You go from there, then you iterate. Now, what would be the, if I give you a matrix, all right? So what would be the most natural choice of B? Okay, B, first of all, is easy to compute. It's not, okay, the best B is A inverse, right? <laughs> but that's expensive. But it looks like A inverse, but it's easy to compute. Okay, so uh, if you do a Jacobi, uh, you make it right here. If you do a a equal to d plus arrow plus u, you usually you write a diagonal, lower triangle, upper triangle. For a symmetric positive definite matrix, you take the diagonal inverse as approximate inverse of a. Diagonal is easy to invert. Right? It goes side as is I take the lower triangular part as inverse. If you invert the lower triangular one, you can just do substitution. So here's my question. Do you have any other idea which would be more natural and better than this? Let's pause for a minute. <laughs> I give you a matrix. Uh, it's a magical part of that matrix. You want to do something easier to invert? But it's also reasonable approximation than that. When you do a symmetrical positive definite matrix, uh, uh, the diagonal should be positive, right? <coughs> so I'm going to talk about a symmetrical positive definite matrix in this lecture mostly. Um, but if you think about um, solving optimization problem, okay. If you do the optimization problem, you look at the stationary point. Then usually that problem, you look at the Hessian. The Hessian there near the optimization problem should be what? <laughs> should be a symmetric part of that. I'm actually aiming for this <laughs> a long linear optimization problem. So of course, that's a long linear problem here, but I do a, do a linear problem. And uh, my view of this optimization, you, okay, you have a lot of local minimizer things you wander around, but uh, and um, but it was, uh, at least uh, if I say get me a local minimal, I say at least we should have a good algorithm to get it fast. Maybe you get the wrong place, but uh, uh, so but anyway, I mean, coming back, it is a bit too many. Different. Give me a symmetric positive definite matrix. Find the most natural humors, approximate humors, that you also easy to compute. I would argue that you can uh, this do <laughs> of course you can do it. Or maybe do a bi diagonal, tri diagonal, or something <laughs> like that. But <laughs> but but the or block diagonal. But the, it is these are the most natural choice. Basically, the Jacobi and Gauss side are the two method in all the iterative business. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I'm not, uh, you don't have any other method in, in, in some sense. Well, of course, it's not true, but, uh, but uh, technically or philosophically, though Jacobi and Gauss are their method, are the method we're gonna study. For the long linear region, maybe you can do gradient this and all that, but also things are all in the same business. And uh, so we're gonna do Jacobi and Gauss side, okay? So, uh, it's been taught uh, in all the linear, linear algebra book, but I'm going to do it differently. <laughs> because I will interpret every other method, multi domain decomposition, 
as Jacobian go side down. Okay, this is uh, at the end of this week at least. Uh, so, uh, so another type of is a cryo of space. If you do the, this type of iterative method, and the, as you can see, the case iteration, this is what they call the, this, you know, if you do this, uh, this uh, iterative method, in the case iteration, you find this in the, this so-called cryo of space. This is kind of preconditioned kind of cryo of space. So this conjugate gradient method is to, uh, but this is something you guys have to go 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 home to. If you conjugate gradient method is something very important, but for long linear problem we don't have really conjugate gradient. Well, people claim they can do conjugate gradient for 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 long linear optimization, but it's a different kind of. Work. But uh, but what I think the one main message is that the, the, since you can see that uh, the case iteration it will be in the crab. If you have trouble to, to see this, you can think of the even identity. This is just a standard cryo of space. But here, you, you look at you look at, you look at uh, a a x equal to b b. So you can think about this as a precondition. This approximate numerous. So every this the right hand side is this guy. So if you if you solve 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 about the residual equation, this anyway. Uh, this is the right hand side, this, this would be the solution. So the conjugate gradient method actually says, I, if, I, if I actually solve this one in this conjugate gradient, in the cryos, in the, you get the best possible one uh, in the, uh, the cryos space, you should do better. Because, uh, because no matter what kind of uh, iterative things you do, it's going to be in this space. You want to minimize the error, so the conjugate gradient should do better. Indeed, this is conjugate gradient is do much better. So the one way to do this thing is that uh, whenever you have uh, some kind of iterative method, in the linear business, you always use conjugate gradient. Maybe the thing is motivated by some Gauss side of Jacobi, but you do conjugate gradient. When you do conjugate gradient, the distance convergence uh, and it, in a rate which is dependent on the so-called condition number of the precondition H, which would be the ratio of the extreme eigenvalues, okay? So you have studied conjugate gradient before here? Yeah? Okay, very good. But, uh, <laughs> then I, okay, now I want to talk about convergence. The convergence is that when, when I, I say this thing is a converge, I say for any initial guess, this is going to converge to that guy, okay, this is converge. So you, you just take a look at this equation, this is going to be looking like that, you will see that this one converge to zero, you find only if this thing goes to zero, that means the spectral radius is less than one. In mathematics, it is always desirable to have sufficient and necessary condition. This is beautiful, but useless. Because <laughs> you, you, uh, you, uh, you, how do you know the spectrum? You, you, you just don't know. So, but, uh, so that we need the more practical condition. Uh, so when practical sufficient conditions, some kind of norm is uh, uh, is bound. Oh, this is not right. It should be less than one. It should be a, uh, the spectral rate. This is an A norm. I'm going to come back to to tell you what this this means. But A is symmetrical positive definite. Okay, this is something I need to to, to emphasize. Maybe I go there with bigger boards. Uh, so in other words, I call the same. Okay, let me let me just say, a a is from uh, v to v prime. But uh, in this iterative business, um, you know, usually the, the right thing to look at from v to its to its dual. But I don't want to confuse you. This dual is something uh, which I'm sure everybody studied. But I can trap every good mathematician. <laughs> They will give me wrong answer. <laughs> they try, this is do <laughs> is, uh, but anyway, uh, we're talking about do is the bound linear function. But I'm going to identify those we will talk about finite dimensional case. Okay, uh, but uh, uh, when you talk about a of u equal to f, this is u sitting in one place, f is sitting in another place. But in the finite dimensional case, we kind of say they're in the same place. Or uh, when you say this one uh, is uh, some, then you have a inner product. This is U of V's inner product. We say this, uh, uh, 
Uh, usually we have something like L2. We do the L2, the little L2. Maybe we do a different function space. Uh, maybe it's L2. So the, when we, we say this when it's symmetric, positive, that it's symmetric, you can self join like that. In other words, we, we, we is positive. We is uh, not equal to zero. So this is uh, the, 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 um, the symmetric positive definite progress. Uh, the, 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 the interesting is that uh, we, we say this will be to the, with the sub A, this actually A, V, V. This is the inner product. We call it A inner product. <coughs> so we're going to do this inner product. Okay, we have uh, this original inner product is also a induced inner product. What I do differently from most of the textbook is that I use this A in a product a lot. Then everything is so uh, straight, uh, so 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 uh, so clean. So we're talking about synergization. What that means is that uh, I do a half of a step with this iteration. The next thing I do the B prime. I didn't tell you this B has to be symmetric. If you go outside of myself, indeed, it's a lower triangular matrix. It's not symmetric. So I'm gonna, this is what I call a symmetrization, okay? Because A is a symmetrical positive definite, and the B prime, uh, B is not necessarily symmetric. So here's, here's the deal. Let me ask you a question. If you have a symmetric problem, do you want B to be symmetric or do you want B to be non-symmetric? Which one is more reasonable? Symmetric. symmetric? How many people agree it's symmetric? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, let's see. So I symmetrize it, you don't blame me, okay? I symmetrize it. So I symmetrize it, you can put this together. So you can actually what I call the a symmetrizer scheme, okay? Now I have this star. So I have this prime, that's uh, that bad guy. Then I have this star. This is T of U V A, you have the U T star V. Well, this uh, this star is the adjoint of transformation for the, with respect to A in that product. Okay. There's a price for the original guy. Okay. Now you just do this calculation. I I think I should do this calculation, right? I mean that this. Uh, 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 I want to do a little bit slowly here because I'm going to teach you something. If you, this is very, uh, very important. Okay, I'm going to do this uh, I minus B A. I minus B A. This is B A. So that's equal to I minus B A. V I minus B A V. Right? So I'm going to, I, I, I do the I joint of this. Okay, I minus B A star, I minus B A. But the interesting thing is that uh, this is the homework. Huh? <laughs> if you do a, you got the homework. This is a simple one. B A star. If I take the B times A, I put the I joint with respect to A in the product. Guess what? This is equal to B prime A. Okay, this is important relation. Trivial one, but it's good to keep in mind. So if you do that one, that's equal to I minus B prime A, I minus B A. But that's actually is equal to uh, my my uh, oops my B my B uh, my B, that's my I minus B bar A, okay? <coughs> so what I'm gonna do here is that, uh, so if you do these things, I'm gonna just say, uh, let, let's look at these things here. I'm gonna do I minus B A V, right? It's I, this is what I just did, okay? This one is a V minus B bar A, because I just, this is a linear stuff. Okay, follow? Uh, this I minus B A, well, I take the, this, okay, this is A norm, right? When you have a, 
you start in algebra, right? If you have a, a, a vector, you can norm, you can define the matrix norm. But my A norm is a, is a vector norm. If you have inner product, then you can define a norm, okay? This is my A norm, this is a vector norm. So that's the, that's the, the definition of this A norm. So you, by using these things here, that's what you could have that guy, right? Because I just did it, uh, I could have uh, skipped it. So that would be the maximum eigenvalue of the I minus BA. But let me tell you this I minus BA is symmetric with respect to the A in the product. Because B bar is symmetric. This B bar. B bar is actually equal to B plus B prime minus B prime A of B, if you compute. Okay. This one is symmetric. This one is a measure, so this is just ready quotient. What is a little bit of different here in linear algebra? In linear algebra, there's always this little L2 in a product, okay? Here I have the A in a product. Okay, you may argue when you linear algebra, this always tell you, okay, if I give you two symmetrical matrix, if you multiply them together, is it still symmetric? Not necessary, but in my dictionary, yes, okay? <laughs> Because uh, if B is symmetric, A is symmetric, the product is uh, not symmetric with the original inner product, but it's symmetric with my A inner product. This is very important. This is the, uh, the, 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 the main thing. This little change of uh, notion will make life much easier. So, you know, this is going to be, okay, this is one minus one, the minimal. You don't have any objection to that. So I'm going to put the minimal, it's the inverse, maximum inverse. Okay, I'm just looks a little silly. We're gonna do, if you do the inverse, okay, max, then you do the inverse. If you do that, but I compute the maximum, will be, maximum, again, you do the ready quotient, okay? But there, there, you move this around, I don't, I don't this, is, this is identical, the same line. <laughs> okay. But if, if, if I, <laughs> If I use this out, this A is canceled, right? You get that guy. So this is my, uh, you, you see these things? I minus B A is gonna be, now if you take the soup, right, this is a, one of the most, uh, the, the, the result, uh, oops. Uh, so I minus B A, I minus B A, I minus B A, you know, is equal to what? Is a, is a one minus a soup. Also inverse. This is my, uh, this is zero, okay? Let me, let me tell you this, uh, it is a very important uh, theorem. Okay, this guy, uh, is equal to that guy, okay? That's I just proved that. But you want to, uh, you want this guy to be less than one to be convergent, right? So this means that you want this quantity to be positive. If this quantity, is, this one is always uh, less than less than equal. This, you want this quantity to be positive. So that means as long as this B bar is symmetric positive definite, this my method will converge. Got it? So this is a sufficient condition. But, uh, but uh, okay. But this one converges a magical positive definite means what? This B bar, you remember this in the, this is the spectrum, <coughs> this B bar is, this B bar, B bar A is a magical positive definite. And uh, this is also going to be a long self, it's, it's, it by itself is a semi-definite problem. So this one less than one, if and only if B bar is positive definite. Because this is the eigenvalue of one minus another guy, this is a symmetrical problem. With respect to the A in that problem, okay, this is a, okay. 
This one is being less than or equal and only if the B bar is positive then. What does that mean? This means that this one, I say a sufficient condition for the original method of converging is this guy less than one, but this, uh, this one less than only if and only if this B bar is positive definite. So this will be something you usually check, which I'll show you the example, it's easy to check, okay? The spectrum less than one is difficult to check. But there's something interesting I asked related to the question I asked you before. Look at what I say. The original iteration converges if its symmetrization version converts. You understand? When I say symmetrize the scheme works if this one's less than one, right? So they say you have two schemes, the original one and the symmetrized one. This theorem says if the symmetrized one works converging, the Original one has to convert. Now we are math <laughs> mathematically is this other way, okay? So what what if so which one converts is better? If the symmetric one converts, the original one has to convert. But the update direction is not necessarily true. Now you ask because I'm actually trying to say the opposite to your answer. <laughs> a long symmetric solver is better for a symmetric problem. It's one of the peculiar things here, which I still don't know the full answer to this question. Okay. I can tell you again, okay, original problem is symmetric. When you solve it, if you symmetrize it, you may not get you may get a symmetrized version which is not converged, the original one actually converts. It is a matter of fact. You might experience uh, in many occasions long symmetric solver is better than symmetric one. Even the uh, V cycle multi bit sometimes uh, you have to do it in a long symmetric one. It's, it's a, one of the mystery which I don't have time to resolve. But I'm at least uh, <laughs> if, uh, you're curious. But, uh, my mathematical statement is uh, crystally clear. You can give a counterexample very easily that um, your symmetrized one com doesn't converge, the original converge. All right. Uh, so, but anyway, let me just look at this thing as, uh, uh, well, this may be some homework problem, let's forget it. <laughs> so, let's uh, look at some examples. Okay. Uh, what is a B? <laughs> I put a number there. Okay, that's just, you cannot beat that one. I put just a scale, it's called an omega. So this is what you call a Richardson iteration. And then I do the modified Jacobi. I put a relaxation parameter. It's called an omega. They usually call it a relaxation parameter. <coughs> and then you have this um, modified Gauss-Seidel method. <laughs> well, this is a little bit too uh, too simplistic, but anyway, you can you can compute uh, this thing. This is going to be bar. Okay, this this looks like a b bar. If you do that, this b bar, you can pull these things out. This uh, uh, this this one, you can pull this b out, b prime out. That would be the uh, inverse of b prime inverse minus. Uh, this guy is the one usually is easier to compute. Okay, <coughs> this one uh, you can compute. Then you say the Richardson converge if zero and that one. The, the, this a modified this, this Jacobi method is usually doesn't converge. You know, the, some textbook actually say the Jacobi method always converge for some major part. That's not true. Okay, and uh, but Gauss Seidel if you compute. This is something, you, you get this quantity, but diagonal, this is modified outside of, this is usually called people like SOR in, in, the, in the algebra book. It's between zero and two, this one should converge. But I want you to tell you that uh, <coughs> it's the way I wrote these things, uh, I, I want you to keep in mind. Uh, you know, when you started linear algebra in the 60s, 70s, 
how do you choose this you know, omega in optimal way? This is called SOR, David Young. You know, it's, it's a big deal in, 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 the, in, in the last few decades. So you want to optimize this you know, omega. So when you do the diagonal units, you can have modified the diagonal. So let me tell you that, uh, so it's a funny way of thinking about the Gauss side. Gauss side there is usually this one, right? This is the Gauss side there, right? If you want to modify the Gauss there, you modify the diagonal only, OK? But you don't mess up with other things. But this is the modification is the same. This is like the omega inverse. So this one is like the omega inverse, no omega d inverse. You can think of the omega inverse d, d inverse, right? And uh, so these are the two quantity, all the same. This is diagonal. So I, 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 I'm repeating this because it is important later on when you want to generate the Gauss diagonal method to, 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 to more generic setting. So now uh, we have a theorem. I have an obligation. So far, I believe everybody, you know all these results, right? But I just have a different way, of, uh, if you know what I'm saying, to, to the derivative. Now I'm going to give this homework problem, OK? So I want you, everybody, <laughs> if you want to walk with me toward the end of this lecture in some informed way, do this homework, OK? So now, I, because, uh, um, I want you to play with three by three, and I, I could have done two by two, but since I'm in Stanford, you should do three by three. <laughs> but, and uh, okay, here we go. Uh, you do this matrix. This is, look at this matrix. This is a, this matrix has a, a three eigenvalues, three one zero. This is the same as definite matrix. Okay, the right hand side is the the sum equal to one. So you see the range, this is a singular matrix. This matrix has a kernel, okay, has a kernel, which is a constant vector. Because you you the row sum is equal to zero, okay? <coughs> now I'm gonna do Gauss side there. Now you know Gauss side there, right? I'm gonna do a perturbation. Epsilon is positive, okay? When epsilon is positive, this is a symmetric positive definite matrix. When epsilon equal to zero, it becomes a semi-definite matrix. But this problem is still solvable because B is in the range of A0. So not, the solution in that case is not unique, but it only differ by a constant, a constant vector. This is like something which if you go to a Neumann problem for, for two-point bound value, just see something. Now we can do Gauss side. So this homework problem is that you should go home to do a math lab. I do the, you don't have to use math lab. We can do whatever. <laughs> and uh, or Python. This is what how people do these days. Uh, so you saw you you can do a Gauss side there or so. Huh? Do it, okay? Please, <laughs> it's good for you. Because since you're going to spend a few hours with me, you might as well learn something. <laughs> I want to highly recommend to do this problem, okay? So, so epsilon equal to one, what, how many iterations? I can tell you that. It's like 18 iterations. You look at the residual, OK? So when I, now I'm going to the epsilon, I'm going to decrease the epsilon. What do you think? If I do decrease the epsilon, my matrix gets a little bit more singular. So my convergence will be go faster or slower? Slower, yeah. 100 iterations. And uh, then you do that, it's terrible. So uh, this is one of the reasons. Uh, this is one of the reason uh, people not always want to use iterative method. Even the three by three matrix. I told you earlier, Gauss said uh, it's the method. You don't have other method. <laughs> but now, now you have this terrible convergence, and uh, it converges it deteriorates very very badly. Okay, again, you, gotta, you have to do it yourself to believe it, okay? Now the question is that, you know, this is not terribly interesting here, but, uh, but uh, if equal to zero, I told you that it is a singular matrix, but this problem still has a solution, okay? But the differ by constant, but the differ by constant, the constant cannot be seen by this A, it doesn't really matter, because A times constant equals zero, okay? So the residual is still, 
how many iterations you think there will need to be? Huh? You think? You think? That is equal to two. <laughs> so, so, uh, so you got to <laughs> compute it, or you have to prove it. Okay. This is my first homework. Is that uh, okay? You code it and prove it. You think you can prove a three by three matrix problem? Okay. Uh, so this is a, a, a very informative example. All the multigrade domain decomposition, you would understand half of those algorithms if you understand this example. I'm not exaggerating, okay? But let me tell you that uh, now the question is that this is not good. Okay, this is bad. So we're going to fix it. Because I'm in these two weeks, I'm going to tell you how to fix a problem like this. This is the first uh, try. The way to fix it is that uh, I'm going to throw in this, uh, uh, this is a generic approach. I do this thing called an expanded system. <coughs> so this is E1, E2, E3, this is a basis function, right? Which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And this is another E I write. Is this a constant vector, OK? The E is my constant vector. So, so this one, uh, oops, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, there's lots of things down there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you, you, you write this x as a linear combination of these four vectors. This is four vectors are linearly dependent, right? You have three vector space, you give me four vectors that have to be linearly dependent. Now, but I, I do it anyway. I, I like redundancy. Uh, that's the main message in this lecture. Redundancy is good. Uh, in linear algebra, you usually say you have a, you deflate a matrix, right? You don't like big size matrix, you make it small. It's called deflate. My dictionary, I don't like deflation. I, I like inflation. But not the market, but, <laughs> not the, but like inflation. I want a big uh, matrix. I want to relax. Okay. When you deflate, you compress this. Not good. But uh, I want to inflate. Now I want to inflate this X. So I have four vector expansion. You got it? So this P, this P is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. That's my P, OK? So I write this as three vector as a P times a four vector. This is certainly not unique, this X tutor, right? But I like a long uniqueness. <laughs> So you write these things here. So I'm going to write this uh, x equal to px tilde, right? So I write it there. But I'm going to time the p transpose. The p is on 2. p is on 2, definitely. The transpose is to 1 to 1, you know. This is what you want to learn from linear algebra. So these two matrix are the same. These two equations are the same. But, they, but my 4 by 4, so I, I, all of a sudden, I become a 4 by 4 matrix. OK. The original problem, this is not the problem I want to play with. So 3 by 3 and a 4 by 4. That's the homework of this week. Okay. And uh, now the question is that I, I, you do not think the nearly singular problem is not bad enough. I'm going to make it a singular. Actually, in the previous page, you said the singular problem is actually good. So I'm going to introduce this extra vector, make it a totally singular for any if so. This is a singular matrix because the solution is not unique. The solution is not unique because this expansion is not unique. So this has to be singular. But you still have positive diagonal if y is not zero. So now let's look outside that for this problem. OK? This is how the Gauss-Sider works for the 3x3. Three three. Now I'm going to do 4x4. Four four. What do you think this is going to happen? But at least you are kind of convinced now. 
Gauss said that actually may converge for singular block. Because last time, you know, you said that's what I said, <laughs> okay, but, uh, but, uh, uh, but Gauss said that actually converges for singular. If it's not converging for singular matrix, then you may have infinite iterate, infinite iteration. But here I do, it turns out that if you do if you get 12, 12 iterations. Now if we increase, is this one go up or go down? That's the theorem. Uh, what do you think? Uh, huh? Down. Otherwise, I'm not here. <laughs> but, but it's going down, going down, going down, going down. Uh, let's stop there. <laughs> but, uh, it's going down, it's uniformly converted. Prove it. OK. You think you can prove it? It's a 4 by 4 matrix. Can you prove it? OK. I. This is my second homework assignment. If you uh, uh, do the programming and prove these two results. But you may have, uh, I do not know uh, how simple the proof is, but it depends on how, what, accurate, what method you use. Here is you, require, you can either do very hard calculation, go to a lab, compute the spectrum radius, or that you can see. But you always do a mathematic proof. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, let me see that uh, the message I'm telling you here is that, uh, well, it probably pays to relax. California is a good place to relax, but not in the Bay Area, I suppose. <laughs> Too much here. But the thing is that, uh, what the relax is that, uh, I think the estimate the, the base philosophy here is to, to, to relax, in the sense that, uh, if you give me a small matrix, I will return with you a bigger matrix. Bigger matrix is more relaxed, it's easier to solve. The three by three matrix, Gauss said, do, do terribly. If I do, make it a four by four, all of a sudden works beautifully. But can I do it in general? This is with mathematician, we can do these things. Okay, we, we introduce, the way to do is, I suppose you, you want me to solve some kind of problems. I introduce some kind of auxiliary space. The way it goes is that uh, I'm going to do some uh, uh, a, a product operator. Uh, usually, when you say these things that, uh, did I hide my so so the uh, this one uh, you can think about the the following way. Uh, you can think about a, a simple case of following. If you think about it, V, it can be written as a, a summation of a J. And uh, usually, uh, this is the capital V, for some reason, I didn't write that thing there. So this, this actually, you can do the pi of I of VI. Usually, sometimes pi I uh, equals the identity. If V, v I, if V I, V I is a subspace of V. So, uh, Let's think of it this way. You write this with this is like R3, okay? R3 can be written as uh, I equal to 1 to 4, E1, E2, E3, and E, okay? It's like last example. But now we, we must take, I'm going to do this abstractly, okay? I say you can write this as a whole bunch of subspaces, okay? This will be redundancy in the sense that this is not direct sum necessarily. But I also say, well, this doesn't even have to be a subspace. If you don't, if it's not subspace, then have the pi i for v i should be should be a map hit. Okay. But at the moment, you can think of this. Uh, this is just a. This is what I call the inclusion. Uh, Inclusion is not necessarily an identity stuff. <laughs> Inclusion, I can, I don't know. I, I, it's like a, you're, you're a student of engineering college. That's VI, okay. <coughs> VI is engineering college. But here, V is a Stanford. But I, you're VI, I'm an engineer student, I'm also a Stanford student. That's an ID, that's kind of identification. But it doesn't, but anyway, I, I, that would be trivial. 
a trivial operator, right? but it's, uh, in, when you do calculation, it's not so trivial. This is where the prolongation restriction come around when you do the multi-bit method. So uh, anyway, you write this uh, bigger space as a summation of subspaces. And then again, I emphasize this sum is not necessarily a direct sum. It has a redundancy. And it's the redundancy that will save us. So, so you, does this mean for any for any of this uh, U? Suppose this is a solution can be written as the solution U, then can be written as equal to summation pi i v i, the U i. This U i is U v i is not necessarily unique, okay? So I, I want to relax, like what I did from three by three to four by four case. So, so you write this in US equal to that, so you plug this one, you put the, it's like exactly what I did the three by three, four by four, I put the pi u tilde here, right? You see that? So I'm gonna do a pi prime because this is subjective, this is because you, have, you can write this as a summation. Means this is a, this actually means that this is equal to pi times v two, and it is subjective. Subjective with the prime will be injective. So this is a, this is a, a equivalent progress. Now this one is bigger progress. Okay. This is much bigger. It's a singular. I'm a little bit crazy here because I want to make a symmetric positive to a singular one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, but you're gonna see the advantage on the road. That's my main message. Singular matrix is good. Uh, so now expanded problem, so I'm going to do the following. And instead of solving this problem, I'm going to solve this problem. This is a more relaxed problem. So the idea, here's the message in the end. The complicated problem like a PDE, all the other stuff, I can write it as this guy, then I just use Gauss-Seder Jacobi for this, and everything is cool. This is the, so I, I would, uh, expand this problem. The problem this is with ear condition, for example, is just too condensed to squish in. That's why you get an ear condition. I'm gonna pull them out, relax them. Like what I did from three by three to four by four. Then I do Jacobi outside for this one. Okay, first of all, let me just uh, give, uh, show you these things here. Uh, if I do an iterative method here, it's equivalent to an iterative method this way, okay. What I'm telling you is that, uh, I, uh, I don't know why I should do some more pause here. <laughs> Just look at the 14 and the fifth, uh, look at the 14, okay. This problem, as I told you, any iterative can be written in something like that, right? This uh, is like the outside of the four by four. Then I said this is like an equivalent to 15. Why is that? Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, so the uh, so the uh, this is important. U tilde U m tilde equal to uh, U tilde m minus one plus E of tilde m. What I'm going to do here is that uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to put a p I'm going to pi on both sides. Okay. I just do a pi on both sides. Okay, look at what I'm going. I'm going. What is this? This is usually called u of n. This is u n minus one. Then plus pi b tilde. What is f? F is a pi prime, right?
all right? This is just equal to u m minus one plus one, and it's called this guy we call it b f minus a of u n. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh. So this iterative method is actually mathematically equivalent to this one. Because ultimately, you want pi un. This is what you're looking for. OK, maybe you say, well, this, may, this solution is not unique. You have a lot of things floating around in the kernel. But I don't care. I could use this pi to kill this kernel and come back to this problem. They are totally mathematically equivalent. Well, another way to say is that from here you can certainly get a, a, a iterative method for this one. So you have to think about the three by three, four by four. That's why careful emphasize you have to look at it because this is a bit abstract. So this is a four by four Gauss down method. I told you you can be interpreted as a, a pre, pre iterative method for the four three by three. That would be a robust method. Now the question, there's uh, many interesting things going on. Huh? You may not like uh, singular major. I really don't like it either, actually, in, in, in general. But uh, mathematically, there's uh, something here you will see. You look at the spectrum. If you think of B is a precondition, OK? Usually, when you do an iterative method, you want the B to be a precondition. Huh? If a b times a b is equal to that, right? Is that right? Now, this is a this is a product of four matrix. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here is that uh, uh, <coughs> this is actually a precondition. Well, it doesn't matter if this is a b, but I'm gonna move this pi like that. I move this pi, I, I, I change the product, uh, the order of the product. And uh, I don't know when I gave an exam to myself, so this is my favorite <laughs> qualified exam problem. If you exchange the order of the product matrix, you get the same spectrums, the same non zero spectrum. Do you know these things? Do you know how to prove this thing? If you have a sigma, C times D is the same as sigma D times C. As long as you can com you can compute, uh, no. they, they may have different order of matrix, okay? But uh, but but the, it's a non-zero one should be also always the same. If you take any two matrix, uh, n by n and n by n, all right? One of them is n by n matrix, another one is n by n matrix. So the eigenvalues, the non-zero eigenvalues, are the same. So this is a, a, a simple. So if you do that, this one is a non-singular problem. This one is a singular problem. You know what? The B times A, the, the spectrum, is the same as the long spectrum B tilde A tilde. I, 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 you, you, you miss this, I gotta repeat it to you. <laughs> because this is a cool <laughs> stuff. You just need, uh, you need power from the computer. Huh? What? You just need power from oh, the computer. Oh, you need power from the computer. And uh, this is important because uh, I should leave it here, otherwise it can go down again. There. <laughs> well, I need to I need to operate the the camera too. So. Oh, I, I should not walk like that. I forgot. 
So I, I need to show you this. Have you, you, you did, were you here, I said these two things are equivalent. Yeah, 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 but I thought, yeah, I've seen your slides before from a, at the But uh, no, this is workshop, the, so I no, remember some of that too. But this one is interesting. You, 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 you change the order of the product. This expanded system, this relaxed one has the same condition of long zero eigenvalues for the original one. Mm. This is the, uh, the, the, the key. So now the, the, the question is how do you do the convergence? The, 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 the CM4 one is pretty brief. Here we go the details here. So you, you go to I, I minus B A here. You remember this is the things I proved before, right? But here is the deal. <laughs> this uh, this if it turns out you can also uh, this is going to be have to prove a theorem, okay? You see, you can do B by tilde U minus V tilde V tilde. Then you have this uh, pi of V tilde equal to V. You do the all the infimum. Because the pi is not uh, one to one, it has a uh, lots of kernel. You take the inverse, then you have this convergence identity. Okay, this is a very important uh, identity, and uh, which is uh, so I'm going to prove this one. I, I need to prove this one is equal to that guy. Okay, basically, huh? If b equal to that one, so I'm going to prove a theorem here. Too, yeah. If we be two vector space and the pi is a subjective mat, b tilde is v, v prime to v. Uh, uh, this is okay. This is incorrect. Uh, the, okay, it is correct. This is a natural part of definite operator. Here's the deal. Okay, uh, <coughs> I also have to, to tell you these things. We we may we may have a long. Uh, we may have a singular matrix. To begin with, a tilde. But my precondition is always positive definite. It's long singular. That's something. I actually, at one point, I spent quite. If it's a singular matrix, my precondition is also singular. Okay. But so far, I haven't seen an advantage of that one yet. And uh, I'm going to confine myself to, to for singular matrix. My precondition I will be long singular. For symmetric problem, my, <laughs> my solver should be long symmetric. I put a long in front of all those things. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, but the long singular. So the so the, the idea is that uh, if you write the b, you know you know how does b come from? I already told you that. B is uh, like that. You see. So, b inverse v v is the quantity to determine the convergence. This one can be characterized like that. This is a beautiful theorem, okay? Can you see why this should be true? This is one of the fundamental uh, results in linear algebra, which you don't usually see in any linear algebra book, but that's it. Uh, have you seen this before in linear algebra book? Well, yeah, excuse me. Can you remind me the definition of the angular brackets? Oh, you can think it's just the inner product. It's just normal algebra. Yeah. Well, yes or no, but it should be not very true, yeah. Otherwise, you can go to do. Is the is the do the parent of the dual space? But I'm going to identify this parent as a little l two or capital l two, depending on whether it's in a vector space or functional space. L two in a product, okay. And uh, I probably should check that. That would be in a product. Now again, think about this is a four by four. This is three by three. Okay. So first of all, I want to prove that this should be symmetric. If this is symmetric, all right. Yeah. Then it's also positive definite. Why should it be positive definite? Oh, it's also positive definite because this is certainly symmetric. Positive. If this one equal to zero, right? Then uh, if you look at this thing, it says E P F prime prime. So this one be. That's it. No, something is wrong. Then there be because b tilde is symmetric, right? So much positive definite, right? So that means a b pi prime v has to be zero. But but a pi is subjective, pi prime should be injective. So this one should be better v equal zero. This, this is some pi for here. Okay? You got it? 
So this would be a symmetric positive dependent. Now, I, I don't know, I, I should have more pauses here. So the, uh, maybe I do the proof here. Uh, this is a very important result. I got to go through the proof for you. Okay. Uh, maybe you want to follow my, my point, okay? You, you take a V2 that you write this V equal to pi V tilde, right? Because uh, pi is from V tilde to V. So I'm going to, I'm going to write this uh, pi tilde star as a pre-image. You know, this, uh, I'm going to just, uh, okay, you write this as a pre-image of the V because when you put a pi in front of it, if you put a pi in front of it, this is just become a B, you know, pi B tilde pi prime. That's equal to B, you was cancel the pi V tilde star equal to V. This is like the, the, the this is like a generalized universe of pi in some sense. Okay, this is the, if you, if you, so, so you can write this V tilde equal to V tilde star plus W, but this one equal to zero. So because uh, V tilde star is a pre-image of uh, V, for any V can be written as this one plus something in the kernel, right? Okay. So now you just take the nth. Because this V tilde star is fixed, so you only have to do the nth for something in the kernel, right? So you expand it out. You expand it out, okay? Because this is a quadratic, this is a bilinear ball. You get this, you get this. The, look at this uh, cross term, which is, uh, so this one, uh, oh, look at this one here, first of all. This one, B inverse tilde, B inverse this one is equal to that, why is that? B inverse, the B, uh, you, if, if the, why, why this one equal to that? Uh, this one equal to, yeah, this one equal to pi, we start, oh, we, oh, we start equal to that guy, okay? We start equal to that, okay? You put that one in there, so it's equal to B inverse V, V. Look at the, this one is equal to that, so B tilde is canceled. Now you move the B prime on this V star, you have B inverse V pi V tilde star. But a pi V tilde star, is equal to V. So it's equal to B inverse V V, okay? Now look at this term. B inverse, this is going to equal to, again equal to that. This one is canceled. You put the things, uh, now you put this pi over there. But this one is in the kernel, it's zero. So the, then what? This one equal to that, this one equal to zero. Now you want to take the infimum of the B to the inverse W star W star. Guess what would be the infimum on that one? Huh? This is a symmetric positive definite matrix. This is, what would be the infimum? Huh? No, but uh, I can take anything. Take zero. Take zero. Okay. So this one is zero, this one is zero. This one should be equal to that. Oh, this one equal to that. So this one should be. This will, this will be equal. I'm a little bit confused here. B is uh, B is the original size matrix. B uh, yeah. tilde is expanded matrix. Yeah, yeah. Why both of them are invertible? Why both of them are invertible? First of all, the original is invertible, right? This is my assumption. Yeah. It's like <laughs> Gauss-Seidel, I just do the off diagonal matrix. Oh, the non no, no, no. But I mean, this one is a symmetric part. I, I assume this is a symmetric part of that. Now here I prove this one is a positive definite matrix. This, uh, this first of all is symmetric, and this one means this uh, B V V equal to zero, V equal to zero. This is a positive definite. I just proved this one. Yeah, it's not obvious. The assumption says that this one is a positive definite matrix. This one, the, the bigger one is. Uh, uh, as I said before, a tilde may be singular, but my preconditioner is uh, non-singular. I need a symmetric positive definite matrix. Yeah, that's a good question. Because I expanded the things, the, 
you may get a singular thing, but I use a non singular as a precondition. So if we put this together, uh, uh, so what, how how our time goes? Maybe we can take a break. Oh, right. well, we can take a break. I mean, there's a there's a, basically two hours. So. Okay. Maybe we'll take a break. This is a good place to take a break. Uh, uh, so you put these two together. I have these things. Okay. This is one of the first things I'm 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 showing you is that. Uh, this is number 15, if the equation we want to solve by like 3 by 3, I want to relax it to make it expand these things into 14. The expanded system is supposed to be a singular, but it should be easier to solve. Once you have a solve for that, then I turn it around. Hey, well, you, are, you think you are solving a singular problem, but not really. <laughs> I'm coming back to this long thing. The singular is just a way to to derive in things, but I kind of. Uh... Now the question is that uh, if I give you some um, problems, how are you going to do? How are you going to um, to find this decomposition? How do you relax the system? Once it's done, when you're done, you, you turn it around to say, okay, after all, it's, it is 15. And, uh, but I think it is kind of uh, informative to explain uh, more complicated method in in the context of singular image. I don't know if you have studied domain decomposition multigrid before. Here I just have one sentence, what is a multigrid for you? Or uh, maybe in the next lecture. <laughs> but, but this is the idea. Okay, we can take a few minutes break. Okay, how, sure, how many yeah. minutes? <laughs> we'll take more. Huh?